Okay, the first thing I see is you can fill a lot of eights here. Eight, eight, there's an eight that goes right there, there's an eight that goes right there. And I believe we've got all the eights. And if you look at these threes, I can solve a three right there. And then uh, look at these fours coming down, and this four means I can solve a four right there. Greetings, friend. I will show you how to solve the rest of this puzzle. Duet by the T-Rex. And I'll explain all the expert and Sudoku tips tricks and strategies as I do it. Click on the link below if you want to try the puzzle yourself. And with that, it's solving time. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself right there. This is a tough, very difficult puzzle. Uh, it's part of the Wild West pack. I'm starting to feature some of those puzzles. I've already done Whirlpool. I've done Markov. Great puzzles. I have solved this before. I'm going to show you where you need to go. Because you get to this spot right here, you're going to get a little stuck. And so the name of the puzzle is Duet. It gives you a nice little hint. Uh, you need to find a naked pair. So duet, two things, right? And there's a lot of that theming going on. Okay, so in this cell right here, what can it be? It looks like it can be a 2 or a 9, right? Because you can see 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all fill in that. You could go right here, the same restrictions apply. That can also only be a 2 or a 9. And you can go and verify that yourself. What's nice is now these two nines, the nines in particular, act as a pointing pair. So nines can't be anywhere else along column six. With this nine and this nine cutting across, we can now solve for a nine. All right, so that's how you make some progress in this puzzle. That's how you get to the next step. You've got to find that first naked pair. From there, it gets a little tricky. We're going to need to do some filling in uh, to kind of help us out here. And so you'll want to fill out column two to start. This is one of the key columns to this whole puzzle. What can it be? It'll be a one looking like a four. Yeah, one, three, four, five. All right. And then you see that can't be a three. This could be everything still. And then these can't be ones. And then this can't be a five. That can't be a four. So we have some by value cells. Anytime you see some BVCs, uh, you're going to kind of see what can we do to kind of getting those restrictions there. The other thing you want to do is look at this column six that we just filled out with those two nines. One, four, five, and get rid of that four right there. This is going to be another key column that's going to help us out. And then what you want to do is kind of look across and finish off row four here. And then we're going to finish off the block because I'm going to show you what the next advanced strategy is that you need to solve to get make some more progress here. All right, so we're looking at one, three, four, five across row four. Uh, we can get rid of that four, we can get rid of that five. So that gives us another by by cell. So we're on we're on to something here, right? And this one you get rid of that one and the four, you have three, five. Okay, hopefully you might see what we've just created here with some by by cells. If I highlight this and then I highlight these two, Maybe you see what it is, right? It is an X, Y chain. Okay, we got the candidates ones, threes, and fives. There are three different cells. The one, the pivot, the three, five, can see these other two pictures, one, three, and a one, five. They're all different by value cells. And what you can do with this is you know if this is a three, that would be a one right here. And if this is a five, that would be a one. So any cell that sees these two yellows, you can eliminate a one. We can eliminate a one from right there. We can also eliminate one from this cell right here. So let's finish the rest of this with our newfound knowledge. All right, you can get rid of the one three there. That's a two five. Like I just said, you can get rid of the one there that cannot be a one, and then you can get rid of the five right there. Uh, this kind of also creates a point pair of ones. We don't necessarily need that for the solve, but I just wanted to point that out. Let's get rid of our color scheme. And because we have now made this another by value cell. Love those BVCs, always going to help us out here. All right, now we can look Look now at columns two and six. And look at, in particular at the candidates one. Where can the ones be in columns two and six? You can see they share a row, row two, but then you also have row four and row six there. And so that creates a skyscraper. Right, because the ones are limited in these two rows or two columns, uh, they share a row and then have one different. So, if a one's here, if a one's not there, that can't be a one. So, this would be a one, 
excuse me, yeah, if a one's here, if it's not a one, this would have to be a one, that won't be a one, and then this would have to be a one right here. So either one's there or there, it could be in both, but it has to be in one of those because of the way the skyscraper works. So I put a, I'll put a link to my um, skyscraper X-Wing tutorial right here if you want to check that out and kind of see some more examples of how skyscrapers work. Well, what's the key to this is now we're going to be able to eliminate some more ones, particularly across row six, because wherever you see the, the two yellow cells see, you can eliminate a one. A one can't be there. And so if a one can't be here, and a one can't be here, and we got a one right there, where can a one reside in row six? Well, now it can only be in one spot right there. So let's get rid of the colors, and we can solve for a one now. Awesome. And since we solved for that one right there, we can eliminate this one and we create another BVC, five value cell. So there, you got this one. And you think, okay, now the puzzle gets a little easier, right? You've done a skyscraper, you've done an XY wing. We've got to, we, we must have broken the puzzle. The answer is no. This puzzle requires still more advanced logic. In this case, what I used logically was a alternate inference chain type 2. And some of you may not be familiar with that. I do have a tutorial on it. I'll put a link here. Go check it out. Get familiar with alternate inference chains. The, the key, though, is what you're talking about. AIC, it's a series of strong and weak links. It's actually what the same thing we use to solve with the XY wing, and we'll use the XY chains, same concept. So strong link means, hey, if, if this is not a 1, then that has to be a 1, because there's only two ones in column 2. And so that's a strongly linked thing. A weak link would be we we'll like the fours. And what you'd say is if this is true, if this is a four, then these two cells cannot be four. So that's kind of a weak link. You can eliminate more than one. With a strong link, there can only be really two possibilities in that house you're working on. And then a strong link, like ones, can also act as a weak link um, because, you know, if, if this is a one, that would not be a one. It, it makes sense. The alternate chain that I found starts right here. And so you have a strong link between this one and this one. If that's not a one, this would be a one. And then a weak link to this one, which is a surrogate weak link, strong link to the three. So within a cell, you have a strong link because if there's a bi-value cell. Weak link to this three. And then you want to see there's actually going to be a strong link to this three right here. And, and to kind of prove that point, what can the rest of column 8b. All right, the three's there, so there's only two spots for the three. So you got strong, weak, strong, weak, and then strong because there's only two spots for the three, to this three. Then you come across here, weak to this three, strong to that four because there's another by value cell. So with the AIC type two, we're saying that this cell is a one. If it's not a one, we just proved by going this way that it would be this cell would be a four. So what you can do is you can eliminate the end candidate from the start cell. We can eliminate a four from right here, and then we can actually eliminate a one from the uh, end cell. But there's no one there, so we don't have to do elimination. This is key because we just made guess what another by value cell, and this is going to really help us out because. Now we get to have some more fun with our by value cell and something I like to call the uh, XY chain, right? And you're doing advanced strategies. If you can get to a spot where you can start looking at and doing XY change, you make a ton of progress. And it also encapsulates some of these other strategies like XY wings. Sometimes it'll kind of cover W wings by using the XY chain. And we've just created a spot for an XY chain using just the candidate that you can see right here, the cells I have filled in. So again, we're going to start from the same cell here. This one is strong to the 5, weak to this 5, strong to the 4, weak to this 4, strong to the 5, weak to this 5, strong to the 3, weak to this 3, strong to the 1. Uh, so I'll make that yellow. So you always got to end in strong links, right? So strong that 5 there, and then 3 to the 1. 
We start in with the 1. You can eliminate a 1 from any cell that sees both the beginning and the end. So guess where we can eliminate a 1? Right there. This is great because now you notice how many one, where can you place a 1 in column 2? And the answer is right here. There's only one spot left to put that 1. So we can solve that 1. Conversely, where can you now play, where's the only spot you can place a 1 in row 4? It has to be right here. So now we've just solved two ones. And since this one cuts across, and you got these two ones right here, that can no longer be a one. Where can a one be up here in block two? That has to be a one as well. And are there any other ones we can solve? Yep, we can actually solve for one right up here as well. Um, and then those, these cells will be ones. I'll just mark that. There's only two ones left. So alternate inference chain. That's how I found it. Not sure what the T Rex is intended solve path was, but I, I got real joyful there, and then I worked to this XY chain. But we're not done. We still have more things we can do with this particular solve. And the next thing I see is a, another skyscraper. So we're talking duet. So I have skyscraper number two, and it involves the candidate five. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here with the fives. Okay, so You'll see in columns six and eight, uh, fives are limited to two spots. They share the same row, row two. So either five's here, if it's not here, this has to be a five, that can't be a five, and this would be a five. So five's got to be one of those two spots, which means we can eliminate a five from this cell right here. And because of this five, there's no five right there. So now the fives become, and what's key here is the fives are uh, a claiming pair or a pointing pair here, actually a claiming pair here in block five because the 5 can no longer be in those two spots because of this skyscraper, which means we can eliminate the 5 from right there, create another 5-value cell. And hopefully what you see is we now have a 3-4 naked pair in column 2. So once we create that, we can solve for 5 right here. Cool. Now we've been able to solve for a 5. Any other solves we can do at this time? Uh, no, not with what we just did there, but there is, believe it or not, now something very, very cool that I'm about to show you that is going to crack this puzzle open. You have uh, a continuous loop. Yep, I'm going to show you the continuous loop right here. All right, and so it all involves by by cells. So maybe, you know, that idea of duets getting into play with these BVCs. I have a feeling that's maybe what the T-Rex had in mind. I will uh, show you. All these cells involved are part of, of our continuous loop. And I cover continuous loops more in my AIC type 1 tutorial. But also, I think more appropriate would be my XY chain tutorial. I'll put a link here. I show you how to do continuous loop with all by by itself. So that's what I'm about to do. So we start right down here. So it's four. Strong to three, weak to this three, strong to two. Weak to this two, strong to five. Weak to this five, strong to four. Weak to this four, strong to five. Weak to this five, strong to three. Weak to this three, strong to four. Weak to this four, and you go right back to the strong again. Basically, what it means is that this cell or this cell have to be a three along row 8. So you can eliminate all the other 3's across here. Conversely, a 2 has to be either in this cell or this cell. So you can eliminate all the 2's across here. You eliminate this cell and create another by by cell. This is the key right here, is eliminating this cell. Okay, uh, conversely, no more 5's along that way, and because this 5 doesn't matter. And then the 4's, no more 4's anyway. Uh, no more 5's, no more 3's, and then, you know, that's already a, a naked pair, so we got that. All right, showing you that, eliminate and get rid of the colors. Now these twos become a pointing pair. Since they're a pointing pair, this cell right here can no longer be a two. So what can this cell be? Two, three, four, five. We said it can't be a two, and it can't be a five. And then what about this cell right here? Four, okay. And so let's look 
3, 4, 5, this has to be a 2. That's the only spot left for a 2 because of this 20 pair of 2s. Okay. So now we're able to solve another cell here. This is great. Now I want to get to one last XY chain. And this XY chain will get us where we need to be. So let's look right here. Uh, we're going to finish out what could be here in column 4. Looks like you can have 3, 5, 7, right? This can be a 3, 5, that can be a 5, 7, and this can be a 3, 7. Okay, so let's let's do our favorite um, XY chain. So do it. I've done one XY chain. Let's do another XY chain. So let's look right here and look for the second XY chain to kind of fill out the duet theme of this great puzzle. So 3 to 5, 5 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 2, 2 to 3. So if we end right there, either 3 is here or it's there. So a 3 can't be here. And we kind of proved that with our continuous uh, loop as well. So that can't be a 3. That's got to be a 7. Okay, I wanted to kind of show that with the XY chain. Well, that might have been an intended logic there. Cool. After filling out that 7, now this is a 5, this is a 3, this is a 5. You're going to see this puzzle is going to come a little bit quicker now. 5, that's a 4, 4, 4. All right, and let's see what else we can do uh, to kind of solve solve the puzzle here. So what are you missing here? You're looking for 2, 7. I'll make that mark. And then you're missing 3, 6 right here. I'll make that mark. All right. And let's kind of do some, some cross-hatching. I think that would be the way to go with this. All right. So I'm looking here at, uh, let's, yeah. So let's look across. You know, I added that 7. So two spots for 7 here. Two, and then what would you have up here? It's going to be a 2 and a 7. So there's 2. So there's two, there's your seven. Okay, now here's your seven from that. Cool, and now what would you have down here? You're gonna have a five and a four. So we can mark that four, five right there. Great, and so you have the two, seven here, and so what would be a two, seven, nine, uh, seven. Yep, I can't do much with that part of it, but seven, 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 two to two. We got the two there, two's there. Okay, where do you want to look next in this puzzle? It would be, oh, why don't we just finish out row four while we're at it. There's four, there's three, there's two. There's your nine, there's your two. You're probably screaming and going, Timberlake, oh my goodness. That was a screamer cell there. You didn't see that. You set us up. You said you solved this puzzle before. Can't believe you're missing these things. Okay. One and a three, here's your three, so there's your three, there's your one. So that's going to be your one right there. And what we got going on here, we're looking for a five and a six. Make those marks real quick. We'll figure that out shortly. What do you got across here? Three, six, nine, that's not where we need it. Let's look right here. Where are the two cells remain? Looking for the four. There we go. We can solve that four which is going to give us the 6 right here. Now 6, 6, and this 6 means this has to be your 6. Uh, what do we got here? 3 and a 9. Here's your 3. So there's your 9. Here's your 3 right here. Okay, here's your 6. Here's your 3. And here is your 6 right there. we got the 9 going on. All right, and now I'm going to clean up all these bi-value cells that helped us, helped us so much throughout the solve. Four and five, okay, two and a seven. Got the two right here, so this has got to be the two across row two. That's going to be your seven. Here's going to be your other seven. Two cells left. Uh, that two's going to come in handy again for this. And what's our last? So it is a nine. So check out this other video of me solving a very cool T-Rex puzzle. I think you'll really enjoy it. You can see some different applications, some more advanced strategies. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link below. Thank you so much to the T-Rex uh, for letting me feature your puzzles on this channel.
You're an awesome setter. Thank you so much for watching.